Hello and welcome to a brand new show, The Red Can Rewind, discussing, unfortunately, a defeat for the Bears. Red Can 38, the Pirates 52. Didn't see that one coming, did we? No. No, to be fair. Um, I thought we'd done the hard work on Wednesday, um, and I really thought we could pull it off. I honestly did. Um, just, to be fair, too many passengers tonight, um, and they rode the track fantastically, to be, you know. But... No excuses. Um, I think a couple of decisions probably didn't go our way. Um, but no, they were just a far better side on the night. Obviously, the boys did struggle in the second half of the meeting, especially in the middle part, actually. In the middle part of the meeting, we struggled. Because after four heats, we were 12 all, and the meeting was there to be won. The tie was there to be won. What changed after four heats? Um, I don't really know. Um, talking to the lads afterwards, the you know, like, Johnny does a fantastic job on the track. Um, I think it's a first really hot day we've had, so getting water into it and getting dirt onto it. The lads want the dirt, and now you know they're wanting dirt in a different place. And and I think at the end of the day, when when we all sort of calm down, settle down, you know, and reevaluate what went on, um, you know, we'll hopefully come up with some answers, and we'll not have another performance like that um, here again this season. Obviously, the talk of the start of every season is at every most tracks, especially the teams are going to be up there, like we hope to be. Is can you go undefeated at home all season? They've come here now and they've won three out of the last three here. Is that a worry? It is. As I say, I, I think when you look at Zach Cook with an average of four point something, um, around our place, I bet if you look back through the through the thing, he's probably averaging nine or ten points every time he comes here. So there's some way he doesn't ride well, but it's certainly not here because he rides this place absolutely fantastic and his brother. Um, I remember a team managed two or three years ago in, in some pairs competition and I picked him out of the juniors and uh, he ended up winning the meeting for us with Casper. Um, and that was Ben Cook then and I've, I've followed them ever since, you know, and uh, the, the pair of them are fantastic. Uh, having Kyle Newman at reserve, you know, that was always going to work and Richard Lawson's been here more than, well, as many times as us really guessing forward so all in all it, it was always going to be tough but i just thought we after wednesday would have had enough and sadly we didn't well there's uh there's two things to talk about i think from the referee there was obviously everyone's entitled to their own opinion but there was two uh one hugely controversial decision and another decision which may go under the radar but i thought it was quite crucial as well in heat number three i believe um one of their now Mike, was it when they had the first callback for was yeah. that heat three or heat four? Um, well, there was the the one that really stuck in our minds was the one with Steve. Yeah, Warrell. that's the one I'm referencing. I think yes. it was about seven. Or, well, I can't remember whatever what heat it was. Yeah, yeah, with Charles and um, Connor. Charles and Connor had made the gate. Um, Steve had jumped, but he'd only impeded himself. Now nine times out of ten, that's normally let go. They'll finish the race wherever they think, and Warrell still gets a he still gets a warning. But he's, it's allowed to basically, he's only hindered himself. But anyway, look, at the referee has to make decisions like that. So that decision, yeah, we, we sort of, it went against her. But let's take nothing away from the, the end result. You know what I mean? It, 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 it happened. We didn't agree with it, but uh, we, we have to just go on, don't you? Yeah, before we move on to the second one, we'll put out there, Paul fully deserved the win tonight. And if both decisions would have went Redcar's way, it wouldn't have altered the result. No, definitely no. not. No, 100%. Well, so, beaten by the better side. Yeah. So I had the perfect view from where I was situated on the second one. And Stevie Worrell came in. Jason left a very small gap. Interrupt me if you disagree. But Jason left a very small gap. Worrell came in, but there wasn't a big enough gap to come in, come through. And he knocked his arm and then knocked his leg. And I've seen the TV replay and that backs up what I've seen. What's your thoughts? You're thinking, we might still win the actual meeting on the night. Yeah? Them two go out and get a 5-1 in the rerun. And then the blue light comes on. Yeah, I, I thought we would, I thought that was probably the little bit of, it wasn't luck because at the end of the day, Jason had already closed the door. There wasn't a door there to open. As you say, the gap was minuscule and there was certainly not to get a bike and a rider through. Um, you know, the, these decisions happen. You know, like Steve is not a dirty rider. He's a fantastic rider. Um, he made the wrong decision. He went for the gap, and the, when he got there, the gap wasn't there. So, you know, he, he sent Jason Skitlin, basically. Um, Jason, there was no way he could have stayed on the bike. Um, so, yeah, we, we just expected there was no malice. You know, nobody was saying for one second that Steve had been dirty or whatever. 
but we just expected the white exclusion light coming on. So when it came on blue, I, I sort of, you know, I, I seen a little bit of that. I was so angry. But as for Jason, he'd had a bad night, you know, he, and he'd, he'd actually got a set up that seemed to work. Um, and the referee, for some bizarre reason, I don't know why, decided that Jason had, he must have thought he fell off on his own. When That's you spoke to thing. him, did he give a reason? Uh, not really. No, he just said that basically um, that wasn't the way he'd seen it. Um, and I said, when you when you see it on the telly later on, you'll realise that you've made a thingy. And he came out with some comment about he would sleep well tonight. So do you know what it is? At the end of the day, that that, that speedway. Um, if I was in Jason's shoes, I, I would have been pretty unhappy. Um, and yeah, it would just put it to bed. We, you know. One last thing on that. If you said there was no malice. And where I was, Steve came round and came and said to Jason, Jason, are you all right? We yeah, know Steve is a nice lad. Oh, absolutely. He just made the wrong choice. Yeah. Yeah, I just think he went for a gap, and when he when he when he got to the gap, there wasn't a gap there. So you know, he had to collect, he had to collect whatever was there at the same. You can't stop these bikes, you know what I mean? When you've committed, and it was just yeah, he he got the decision wrong on the night, but as you say, absolutely no malice whatsoever. You yeah. know, I was going to pause there, and when I'm going to be joined by one of the pool members, I don't know yet because I haven't went and grabbed them, but we will be joined by a pool member. I promise, I'm now joined by pool number one. Stevie Worrell. Stevie, I don't think anyone expected that, not even your boys tonight. Um, you know, I would say secretly we, we didn't expect it to you know, the scoreline to be such a so like so big. Um you know, I, I said on BSN before the meeting started, I, I expected it to go down to eight fifteen or go down to them later heats. Um but you know, it did come as a bit of shock. But you know, it, it's not something that we we didn't expect, you know, we we know as a team, you know, as a seven, we all believe in ourselves, you know, we, we all believe in each other, we know what we're capable of, you know, we're similar team three times, uh, two times now, um, league league winners, so we know what we're capable of. When I did the preview for this match, I looked and you have over 100 appearances as Red Carradas, uh, the only one I couldn't find was when you rode for us, right. so you... Your team have rode for over, for Redcar over a hundred times. That is obviously what has helped you tonight as well, plus the Cook brothers. Yeah, you know, um, Zach, he's been riding here, you know, quite frequently with with other teams. Richard's been guesting. Um, you know, I I had a couple opportunities, well, missed opportunities, whereas whether you know whereas I should have been part of it. But you know, uh, history shows I, I always tend to go well around Redcar anyway. Um, this track I like to race. So yeah, we you know it. it Things did work in our favour um, with that sort of stuff. You know, we we had a bit of, I guess, I guess you could call it practice. You know, like we we had a bit of help coming into it. Um, but it's the same for both teams. You know, it's the tracks brown and round, and we're all on five hundred cc speedway bikes, and we all have the you know the same opportunity to go out there and I guess do what we can with our bikes, fiddle around, get the right setup, and. You know, we all had the same opportunity and it was just, you know, thankfully we come out on top. When I did this with Gavin uh, Parr, you've won now three on the bounce here. That just keeps breeding confidence. That means you, you might come here in the Notto Cup if we can get through and you can get through. You obviously will come here in the league. Surely now it gets an even bigger task for Redka because, yes, Redka are on the home track, but a lot of people will think Redka don't have much of a home advantage. You'll come here in the league and you'll be even more full of confidence. And that in that case, you should have five experts because Lavender's row as well. Yeah. Um, I guess when you look at it like that, it's, it makes Red Car's life pretty tough. <laughs> um, you know, but like, uh, you're, I think you're the first team to, Red Car are the first team um, to, to run us so close. You know, like if you look at all of our pre-season, or, or well, the SM meet, meetings. Yeah, yeah, yeah the, the meetings leading up to, our home match last week. Um, our score lines was pretty big, you know. We we was, well, I don't like to. We was hammering people, you know. And game, Danny Ford we, was looking through his fingers. Yeah, we was going there. <laughs> we, we was going there with big points, you know, like big points differences. And obviously, going into that red car match, we was hopeful of you know fifteen twenty plus, you know, as a point as a lead, and it didn't quite work out. You know, your boys pushed us really close it was just them them last couple of heats which kind of give us a little bit of an edge and, a, and you carry that a little, yeah and, and, and almost say a little bit of belief so mm. it was you know we needed that to finish the meeting off to close it out and obviously it give us that confidence coming here and like you say when you 
when you look at history and it shows that we've you know of our form here you know we've we've had quite a lot of wins so it does fill you with confidence if you're going to attract that you know you know that certain riders don't like it you know we've if we've been hammered in the past there as a team it obviously it makes yeah. life makes life tougher but um you know we we believe we could do it tonight yeah because when we used to i think when you or your brother rose from newcastle we used to come there regularly in the 13 14 years 15 and you just think my god we're going to get battered and most of the time we did buy newcastle because they're own track advantage and we'd have a rider in who'd absolutely hate the place and it just works like that what we could have done was the meeting abandoned because your bike was stuck stuck on the fence the other night we would have won then yeah the meeting was abandoned yeah, yeah. due to a stuck bike yeah <laughs> yeah we managed to get that off but... yeah so we will talk about the elephant in, in the room the uh crash with jason edwards were you surprised to be in the rerun no to be honest um when i look at it you know i i haven't got any room jason's got that whole track you know, on the right of him, he's. We've both come into that corner together. Uh, I, I know, like everyone has different opinions of it. I'm sat on the bike. I know the decisions I make. I'm not a dirty rider. Oh, no. I, I don't wipe people out. You know, like, I'm the last person who's going to do that. Um, you know, Jason had every opportunity. He knew I was coming because you know you know when someone's there. He had every opportunity to move right, knowing that you know, like it. A lesser rider on the inside, like in my position, would have maybe backed off because Jason's tried to squeeze me up. Um, but you know, naturally, we're we're racers. We're yeah. I'm going for that. I, I've spotted the gap. You know, the 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 doors open for me. Basically, I'm going for it. And Jason, you know, he had every opportunity to move right, which is what the referees probably looked at as well. He had every opportunity to move right, and he could have even entered that corner wider and turned back because obviously I'm coming in narrow, so I. In, I'm only going one way. I'm drifting up the corner. I can't get to the inside. Um, so he could have, you know, he could have moved right and turned back and probably passed me back coming down the home straight. Um, you know, there's different, obviously. You can see why the uh, Red fans and management are aggrieved. Yeah, well, I can and I can't. You know, like I'm, I, at the end of the day, I'm sat on the bike. I, I make the decisions. And it wasn't a dirty decision. Oh, no. I, I would never do that. Um, at the end of the day, it didn't really make a difference. If, no, it, it, went, if, it, difference. if it went down to one point, you could argue that, you know, but um didn't make a difference. Well, just um, for reference, when we had Gavin Parr on, he said, we know Stevie's not a dirty rider, he wouldn't do that, and we both agreed, obviously, it wouldn't have made a difference on the final outcome of the meeting. Yeah, yeah. Playing devil's advocate for a second, people watching this will say, if Jason moves up, he knows then you will come under him, and then you will sail off in the distance uh, and chase after whoever was in the lead, which I think was Danny or Charles. Would you see that point of view? Yeah, of course it is. Obviously, I'm trying to overtake. You know yeah. that that's natural. That's what's happening. I'm I'm trying to get past Jason. Um, he left the door open for me, which is that was the first mistake he made. You know, like if he'd have been on the inside and clamped me down earlier, I have to I have to shut off because the door's not open. The door was open. You know, I've gone for the gap. He had every opportunity to just move right. And uh, yeah, you're right. I probably would have you know gone up, hit the dirt, and sailed off into the distance, tried to catch Danny. But you know. Someone um, a bit more experienced would read that would read that overtake straight away. You know, you watch the Grand Prix; they do it all the time. Someone dive bombs, you 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 know it's coming, so you'll turn a little bit, turn a bit deeper, and come back on yourself. And you can you he could have used that banking because um, obviously you have a lot of yeah, banking yeah. here on Ben three and four. He could have used that banking in his favour, come down, and he probably would have got back past me going over the line, and he'd have been on the inside to be in the driving oh, seat. <laughs> well, everyone's but, entitled to their yeah, opinion. Yeah, but that, that's the way, you know, like if I was put yeah. myself in that position, if I go into Jason's position, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. You know, I'm not sliding across the track on yeah. my ass. I'm, I'm going in deeper and cutting back and passing you back. Yeah. Um, but moving on, Poole deserve winners into a final now with the Glasgow Tigers. That's, although we were hoping to be there, that's going to be a big clash and you'll be looking forward to that one because last year you won the meeting at, pl at Poole in the playoffs in the first leg. Yeah, yeah. So feeling confident, I'm assuming. Sure. <coughs> uh, well, yeah, you would say so. You know, if if you go off our scores before that, our last home match, you know, that some of the big advantages that we we built up at home. Um, yeah, confident. But the last home match where you guys ran us so close, kind of bit give us a bit of a kick up the bum, I guess. So, um, whether there's things that need to be addressed at home, you know, like uh, I know we we didn't really. Pref prefer the track how it was on um on wednesday when you guys visited you know a little bit different to what we would usually have so whether that played its part i'm not sure um 
but if if you know if we can get that to how all seven of us like it we mm. can hopefully build up a big lead or if it if it turns out that we get the second leg i don't know how it's working yet yeah um you know we we can just do what we do there the last one moving on away from championship just a quick one did read a report in the uh online that wolves are in talks over a new stadium and that's obviously amazing news how much of a shock did it come to you when the news was announced originally well, you would just never think it, you know, a club like Wolverhampton. Stable with a, club, isn't it? Yeah, with yeah. the history that they have, you know, that you look at it and, you know, they're, like you say, stable, like, you know, financially as well as everything else, you know, you just wouldn't really expect it to come. So, obviously, it was a big shock. Um, it's almost like you don't want to believe it, you know, like, you know what goes on in British Speedway, people, you know, people say things and there's always stuff going on in there and, it's like a constant drama circle. Um, so I'm almost trying not to believe it, you know, like I'm almost trying to think, oh, we'll be here next year. But I think at some point I've got to realise that, you know, there might be the chance that Wolverhampton won't be on next year. Um, Which would be very, very sad. Yeah, and I, and I know, like, you, you, I don't know how much I can say. Obviously, I know a little bit because yeah. as part of the team, we've, we're have we being kept updated because um, at the end of the day, it's our future as much as it is theirs. Um, so I don't know how much I can say, but it, no, like the, it's quite positive. There's mm. things going on in the background that, you know, hopefully will be positive for Wolverhampton in the future. So thank you very much, Steve, for joining us. Thirty-eight fifty-two, not the result what we wanted. Definitely the result he wanted. Yeah. They're in the final. We're out. We'll get you back in the league. Yeah. 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 yeah? Good. Oh, great. Yeah. Thank you very much. <laughs> cool. Cheers. Thanks. Back here with Gavin Parr for the concluding part. Gavin, we look forward now. If you look online, there'll be, we want him gone, we want him gone, we want him gone. We know Red could don't work like that as a club. But is there, are we considering a different approach? Are we considering getting rid of a certain rider? Um, let, let's not have a knee-jerk reaction for the moment. Um, we've just, you know, we had a great result at Poole. Um, we've, had some, <coughs> we've had some really good results. Yes, we know where we're not firing. And these riders know, you know, that we kind of go on like this forever. We kind of just rely on Charles and Danny getting big, big scores. And, and then we're guest at number one. You know what I mean? We need to work as a complete unit. And it just showed tonight. I'm not saying it would have won the thing, but Jason's been averaging six, seven points a meeting. And Jason had an off night tonight, which is the first one he's had this season. But it just showed how weak we are. You know, basically, we cannot carry three three stroke, four bodies, do you know what I mean? It just doesn't work. So we've got Glasgow. Um, we'll have the Glasgow home meeting here. Then we've got the away meeting on the Tuesday. And then oh, I'm going to come. It's half term. Uh, oh, not my car. <laughs> no. <laughs> so we'll just, uh, we'll reevaluate and then we'll see. But what, what we can tell everybody is that, like, we won't just sit. Um, you know, we, we, we don't come from being one of the fancy teams in the league to a bad team, like, overnight. but if changes have to be made, we will make them. Thank you very much for your time. Okay, no problem at all. Thank you. Have a nice Cheers, rest of the Ryan. evening. Thanks. Cheers, And thanks Pat. all for watching tonight.